Okay, so we've got the um, signal generator here hooked up, so we have an 8648B, uh, it goes up to 2 gigahertz, and uh, this particular unit has a 1E5, which is a stable time base, so hopefully uh, that'll give us a, a decent accuracy. Um, I've set it up at 10 megahertz, uh, output at minus 20 dBm uh, signal level, hooked it up to the input of the scope, and if we preset the scope, and we'll put in a frequency at 10 megahertz and let's go for a span of uh, let's start at 100 kilohertz to have a look so there we have our nice uh, our nice span there um, and we can see the peak so if we uh, bring out marker and do a peak search so you can see we've got 10.00 5 I think it is on there. Um, obviously we can zoom in a little bit so if we reduce our span to uh, let's go in for 10 kilohertz span uh, that's nice and then do our peak search again and we've got our 10.00000 megahertz so uh, we're on the five zeros there and then Let's go in a little bit more again. So span, uh, let's try one kilohertz. So obviously we're very close in, uh, but now we've got our got our six zeros on the top. So these two, the references aren't connected to, to each other. Um, this one is just using its internal reference with a little, little loop cable on the back. Um, this one is running independently. I have been letting them warm up um, for a little while though. They've been running now for just about an hour. Um, so this cable as well is not really ideal, um, it's just a cheap bit of coax there, but we can see uh, minus 19.54 dBm, so it's given us a reasonable a reasonable power rating too. Um, so what we can do is we can change around the frequency a little bit, if we bring our span out to say 10 kilohertz, um, and what we'll do is we'll, tr we'll go in, we'll try this at 20 megahertz, so if we bring our frequency to 20 megahertz, that's 20 megahertz output, so it's disappeared there, frequency 20 megahertz and we can see here on the top, let's get a span again of 1 kilohertz um, and zoomed in and again you can see 20 megahertz and we're nicely nicely zoomed in with the marker on there um, let's go for frequency at 100 megahertz and frequency 100 megahertz and we can see we're just off to the right there a little bit of our signals slightly over here to the left so if we come out with a span of a uh, span in this case of what we'll see let's do 10 kilohertz yeah and then we do a peak search so you can see our marker up on here and we've got 99.99982 megahertz so very slightly off um, so again I'm not sure if that's this unit here I haven't calibrated this unit um, before um, but you can see that the, the counter's given a, a, a good signal here the nice thing is that this has the um, 10 megahertz input on the back um, and it has the, state, the sort of frequency synthesizer output um, to feed into that but you can hook this up then to for example a rubidium source or other high frequency 10 megahertz output source um, as, its, as its input uh, for reference so again let's go across the span a little bit let's go for 500 megahertz 500 megahertz and we'll do frequency 500 meg and Again, we're a bit further off again, so my suspicion is probably this unit here. Um, if we go to there, we've got uh, 499.99913 megahertz um, as the peak there. Uh, so if we then do frequency 1 gigahertz. I uh, don't have a gig button, so 1000 megahertz, that'll do well, frequency 1000 megahertz there, 
And if we do a span of 10 megahertz, at that sort of frequency, and then pop the marker, peak search, 99.97 megahertz there. So as I say, I'm not sure whether it's this yoke or the spectrum analyzer is off. Um, we do have another uh, frequency generator which I'll bring in in a minute um, and we'll run that again. So we'll do it at 2 as well, I can do this at 2 GHz, so we'll do 2000 MHz. Uh, 